Lower on the totem pole was Napoleon's old friend and current aide de camp, Captain Marmont, born at Chatillon sur Seine in 1774 of an old aristocratic Burgundian family. He emerged from his royal military school in 1790 as second lieutenant and then went on to the artillery school at Chalons. He had met Bonaparte during the siege of Toulon and they remained close thereafter. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Ragnarok here with part four of my Napoleon Italy campaign, which has been interesting somewhat to start things off. We've had some tense battles already and um, yeah, come close to, uh, to defeat here a couple of times, but uh, we've survived thus far. Our army is relatively in tatters. Uh, we lost one of our artillery pieces which is really unfortunate. <coughs> These guys are going to be replenishing very slow. Uh, the only way we can get faster replenishment is way down here, but I don't think we want to backtrack. We do have to meet this army at some point, some point soon. And we have to start preparing for that. And I don't think we can actually, yeah, we can't actually recruit artillery. The only option would be to change the barracks. We could change it to a cannon foundry which would enable the recruitment of the six pounders however uh, it doesn't really make sense because well, we really don't have that kind of time I mean it's gonna take three turns to recruit that and then or three turns three turns to build that and then three two more turns to recruit the artillery that's five turns we need to get on the move so um, that we're not really in shape to take on that army just yet. I think I'm just going to put everybody into the settlement here for now. Army just in tough shape, so we've got a full stack, sort of. But we're replenishing slowly, with the exception of the, the garrison troops. Probably should merge these two units. Yeah. Let's merge these two. And then let's merge you into there. Try and get our income next turn is actually pretty good, so we'll be able to rebuild a little bit. I don't want to build in these provinces until we get rid of um, this force here. Which I, I just really hope they don't come down this way to Genoa, because that could create a problem. I don't want to have to backtrack to get to them. I mean, we could come down around this way, but <coughs> hoping they either go up to Nuria or just stay put where they are. In any case, we do need to recruit some troops here. Ah, uh, it's not uh, repaired. That's why we can't re recruit the cavalry here. Um, how much does it cost to repair this? Three thirty-eight. All right. Well, pick up one of those there, and I guess. We'll pick up one there. Alright, so let's see what happens here in the end turn. I do want to build these. Um, and I do want to get up to this. We need to defeat this force. First of all, they are coming for us. Or they're actually... Hmm. This is a very interesting move. They could have taken the road. Oh, they're actually splitting their forces. This is fucking fantastic. They're sending these guys back. Oh man, that's great. That's probably the best possible situation. Noble people of Milan have suffered Austrian occupation for many years and yearn to be free of their influence. Liberate them from this oppression and they will surely welcome you with open arms. Reward treasury plus 1000. Grants a unit of revolutionary infantry. Alright, so we could go for the settlement. 
to take out this army that left the artillery in the army. <coughs> Why they split up their forces like this, I don't know. But um, works for us. We probably won't be able to get to here this turn. I would like to get rid of this army first. I guess we could have split our own forces to deal with this force. Let's actually fight it because I, I feel like we're going to be able to do a much better job than the auto resolve here. We actually get to uh, get to deploy. We're not kind of we're kind of not a position to uh, lose any more troops unnecessarily. Do have the high ground. <coughs> I think we're gonna put the artillery right here. Damn this weather, sir! Wet powder makes misfires a certainty. Should get a. Uh, Uh, unfortunately, we lost the Grenadiers. That is uh, that's too bad. Stay right there. If they actually make it over here, which I highly doubt they will. Let's just hang back here. Alright, we need to shut down their artillery initially. I think we will position the cab here. Both of them, they should be both hidden. Get moving right away. Should maybe stretch this out a little bit more. We have killed their general, oh, wow. sir. Now That's they must shot. break. Prevent them from shooting. It's a really lucky shot. Some of our shots are skipping over the. Uh... Still don't have that double click down. This guy should be able to take them on without too much trouble. Need to shut down their artillery. I want to prevent them from shooting. And then. We'll let our artillery pick this guy off slowly. Can we get out of this without any casualties? That would be fucking fantastic. Oh shit. Finish him off. Thought we were done here. Artillery! Come on, break him. Break him. Break him. Alright. See if we can draw him back to our own troops. I mean, it could just do like a little horse sandwich here. Maybe that is what we'll do. Or we can just let the artillery shoot him. They don't know what they want to do. Oh, 
cavalerie attend les ordres, monsieur. Ouais, well, c'est nice shot. La cavalerie attend les ordres, monsieur. Je suis protégé par ce hill ici. Guys, I guess probably should have got these guys up here to help out really quickly. Four men we lost. We're getting good replenishment here, actually. On the cavalry, cavalry and militia. On Yeah. So. Oui, monsieur. Have to stay here for now. Marché. I wonder what we should recruit and where we should recruit it. What do we got here? Fusiliers of the line. Should probably get a little bit more quality into the mix. Get some more quantity. And I guess we'll recruit another one here. I'm gonna say we should get some more cavalry. Because we're down to two right now. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that instead. Two more cavalry instead of the fusiliers. Just try and get the numbers up for now with the militia. There and there. Yeah, that should be all right. Ah, so this guy is coming back now. Or is actually, is that a different, I think that's actually a different general. Hmm. Uh, maybe they're trying to, maybe they're trying to draw me into a trap here. We could bypass them and go for Milan. This is declared war on us, eh? Ain't that some shit? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Begins here. Unit there, that's three. So. We have the army, which is in not great shape. Oui? We send you ahead. Can we get a look at what they've got? Just wondering if they've got actual um if they've got artillery. They they must have artillery, and I'm pretty sure they will get uh, some of the armed citizenry as well. Really would like to have these cavalry for this. Well, we'll have to make do with what we've got. Monsieur, vos ordres? Some Napoleon guns that went for three more units. Put you in there. Troupe! En avant! En attente de vos ordres! Pavillon! Commencez le siège! Hmm. There's a 
lot of artillery six pounders too and we're still only have the two guns it's gonna be tricky especially too they have the um the cavalry in this fight en avant pour la couronne et le pays en avant pour la couronne et le pays d'autres ordres into Napoleon's army into Napoleon's army as well pourrissent dans leur porcherie monsieur vos ordres start making your way making your way there son of a bitch already they're a decent army <clears throat> Village assiégé. Village assiégé de ravitaillement. Yeah, the dragoons could make it very difficult for us to be able to take out their artillery pieces. A lot of this is the arm sickness injury, which isn't very good. All right, well, let's take a look at what the battlefield looks like and let's see what we can do here. Fucking rain. Are the guns on this side? Very interesting. Ah, uh, they've got another gun on this side as well. Hmm. I don't like this hill here. If we can get our artillery back to here and deploy onto this hill, it would be in pretty good defensive position. Only trouble is we're gonna get to their artillery. They only have two very depleted light cavalry which could be very well mo overmatched by the dragoons all right well at least we've got third gun now um anyway you guys are hidden there Wait for the right opportunity. <coughs> Try and see if we can get their art get to their artillery there. This, this hill here. I'm just try and defend here. Etat-major des généraux, à vos ordres. Artillerie au rapport. Marchez. Don't like that tree in our way there, but what are we gonna do? Thank you. 
you guys come back and stay in reserve back here They are on the move. Sort of. Alright, we need to get to these guns before they get unlimbered. Means we need to get through the dragoons. A couple shots into the dragoon. Ah, dragoons might be able to take them down. I hope so, anyway. The only chance we've really got here. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Go, good first volley. Come on, get a second volley. That's just not gonna go well now. I feel like we're winning though. It's because of our numbers. Come on. Yes. Yes. Break them. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna be able to win here. So, pretty heavy cost. Alright. Let me get to those guns. Get out of range of these fusiliers of the line. Might actually even be able to get the general here, too. Get actually these guns set up a little bit better. Get them unlimbered. Just get our deployment right. Heavy cost, but we did manage to get there. What are they doing with their general? I guess he's enraged that we took out those guns. Is he gonna charge at us? He's gonna charge at our troops. Are the cannons ready to be unlimbered? Alright. Oh, sweet. They brought this Dragoon over here, which means we might be able to get around to the other artillery piece, which is presently undefended. However, we're just going to be very careful that there's not any deployables back here. 
It's gonna take us a while to get around this force. Uh, around the city. I think we've got a pretty solid defensive position back there. Even though they have the cavalry advantage now, I think we'll be alright. Provided we can get those uh, artillery pieces. It doesn't look like there's any deployables, any fences, or anything to uh, trip us up, so that's good. Alright, let's actually walk you guys for now. For that ah, son of a bitch. Got them way out front there. What kind of range do you guys have? It's just out of range. We don't really have time to walk you guys. Just want them to get a little bit of uh, recover, a little bit of their fatigue. Just a six pound gun. When we send our cavalry in here, basically they're going to get killed now. Because uh, they're lined up in front. Maybe we'll just wait. Actually, come back this way. Wait and see where they position them. Give our cavalry a rest. Let's see what happens here. Fortunately, they're just out of our range. Dragoons could be a problem. <coughs> Not crazy, but fighting in the rain. Oh my gosh. Guess we can't. Yeah, I guess we can't deploy there. a second row here. So it looks like they're gonna swing through this way. That is if they do come at us. I would love to get to their commander there. Very slim on their cavalry now, though. Artillery au rapport. Artillery au rapport. 
didn't actually unlimber this guy. I'm actually gonna move. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not crazy about where I have them deployed. I think move them. Wait, wait. Actually, let's move you over to here. Should be good there. Let's move a few right to there. Very interesting that they're bringing these guys over to this side, all the way from over there. If we deployed our artillery a little bit further up, we would have got some some free shots there. We dragged them across, which I maybe should have done. But just like this um, this hill here, this seems like a really solid defensive. Uh, Defensive position. Might be able to sneak up and get a couple shots in the back of their commander here. I think I'm gonna try and do. Just keep an eye on the dragoons. Here come the dragoons. One more volley. Let's get out of here. Come on, one more volley. La cavalerie attend les ordres, monsieur. Fucking hell. Oh, we got a couple of them. With the attention of the dragoons as well. I'll probably just get over here to safety for now. Alright. Deploy their artillery yet? Good god. Take your sweet ass time, why don't you? down a little bit. Should be able to shoot over their heads there. See if we can come around here. This one should be um, speeding things along a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to take an age. Dragoons can't protect both the general and the artillery, so maybe we can actually get to the <coughs> artillery now. They still haven't unlimbered, oddly enough. So the Koreans are awfully close by though. I have an idea though. 
Maybe we can distract them with one of them. One of our cavalry. Slow it back down for this. I didn't fall for the bait, but I think we still got the artillery, though. Maybe. Our men are running, sir. Fuck. Not gonna quite get them. I mean, we got two of the guns. A number of the artillery commanders, but. Damn, if we had kept them together, we would have surely been able to uh, finish off the artillery. They are breaking now. Oh, actually, they don't have any of the guns now. Just out of our range. Shit. Turn around and shoot them. Pretty please. One of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. Is that this unit? Yeah, it is. Alright, I think I'm probably. I guess we'll withdraw him and we'll bring on the two generals. I guess they'll be helpful for morale. Head that way, sir. Well, at least save one of the cavalry. We can merge this with the other unit, I guess, but still. I don't know. They're very quick to recruit anyway. And their, their upkeep cost is... Is one third what their um, what their recruitment cost is anyway? So I, I think it's just better to use them sort of in an, in an expendable. Might have to these two off the field here. Where is he going? We might be able to actually their general here. It's a little bit risky. A little bit risky, but we've got them, got them out number two to one here. Between our two generals, we're kind of sandwiched them. It's hard to see what the fuck is going on. We have killed their generals. All right, dude. Alright, I'm gonna withdraw those two. Good job. And it looks like they are ready for this attack. old Bonaparte himself. I don't even see him here. Anyway. 
down here, you're gonna have to uh, help support the troops. I'm a little concerned about. And then maybe let's move you two over to there, and then we'll charge forward with those units. Seems like we're holding over here. Their morale is gonna be shit from losing their general. Definitely does help, despite the fact that they have better quality troops than we do. Oh, I guess should be running. up over here. It's good. Alright, let's line up and turn this into a shooting gallery here. side and get a little bit of a, uh, oh fuck those fucking dragoons. Are okay, you guys line up, get ready to deal with them. Shouldn't 
on his own, Papa Shoot. Give them the bayonet. Let's go. The man of the teams must rest a while. Get in there. Just need to break the rest of them. This didn't go quite as well as I, as I had hoped. Ooh, take some heavy damage there. Our men are running for. All right, let's just go for it. Uh, Bonaparte, you should probably get back out of this. You can pick them off. Yeah, their troops are a little bit better quality than ours, so they're gonna fight a little bit better in in melee. Glorious victories, huh? Is soon to be yours. Again, a lot of casualties, but I think it's worth it be able to merge up a lot of these units and replace them very quickly, especially holding so much territory now. I think our generals are in one piece. We may have lost one of uh, Napoleon's aides there, but I'm pretty sure Napoleon is still in here somewhere, though. It's a hard time spotting him. Oh, I guess that's, I guess that's him right there. Get over here and help them. I think if we break this unit, these these guys should get the army loss. Our men are running, sir. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, it is really easy to get a heroic victory in this game. It seems like every fucking victory is a heroic victory, but... Fier et victorieux! 1,200 losses, which is quite a bit. But, I mean, bulk of that is our, our militia, which are pretty easily replaced. And the main Austrian threat, so that should allow us to push forward to Milan and Lodi without worrying about armies coming in behind us. However, we've got this force that we're going to have to potentially deal with. A little bit of a tricky situation here. I think I'm going to recruit a couple more cavalry. I'll have them come up this way and help us defeat this force. And then let's recruit militia here and here. How are we doing for finances next turn? 2600, which is not bad. Votre humble serviteur. Shoot, I think we did uh, we did lose one of our generals. Ah, that's unfortunate. There are event messages here. Guess not. I don't know if he's just injured or if he's actually Oh, we actually lost him. Because that's actually pretty... Uh, having generals is extremely important, especially once you start getting more and more troops. Alright, I'm going to send you down to here. You're going to be in charge of getting rid of them. And we're going to have to send a force back there. Having lost the general, though, 
Messina. I think it's Messina that we lost, yeah. And lost Messina is uh, not good. All right, we'll keep you guys in here. Um, just wondering how many of these guys we should merge up, I think. I think I'm more of elite troops. We'll leave them for now, and we'll merge some of these. to save us a little bit of cost next turn. Uh, though we, I think I did that wrong. We lost a lot of the experience there on them. But that's up, up to 2,900. Those will be replaced very quickly. Uh, so, kind of in a tight situation here. Hey. Like them push on to Milan, but we do need to deal with this force. And I do also want to send a force back to scoop this up. So, I think I'm going to end things here, guys. I'm going to send a small force to uh, prevent the Venetians from getting in here to Genoa and getting behind our lines. And then I'm going to send a small force up here. I, uh, so that's going to be... The longer it takes us to get up there, the worse that situation is going to be. We might even head towards Milan with, with Bonaparte. I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm going to brew a tea and think about what I want to do next, but I think that's the plan. We'll send a small force here to defend and we'll push forward to Milan and just try and get some more troops in the field and just see if we can take some more territory, even though that, even though our army is in pretty rough shape. Monsieur? Right, yeah. So let's read a little bit more from Schoem's uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, and then I'll uh, leave you guys for the day, and we'll see you next time. Joachim Murat's background also differed from that of his fellow commanding officers. Officers, Born in 1776 at La Bastide Fortinier in the Department of the Lot, the son of an estate steward with enough money to ensure his getting a reasonably good education at religious schools and seminars, he then ran off at the age of 20 to enlist as a private in the cavalry. Thanks to the revolution, he was promoted to second lieutenant in 1792, then major the following year, after serving in the North and Champagne. He worked under Napoleon's orders during the Paris Rebellion of 13 Vendemar, October 4, 1795, and was promoted to colonel and senior aide-de-camp in 1796. Tall, broad-shouldered, relatively good-looking, and boastful womanizer with an extraordinary taste for the bizarre in clothes. Within a few weeks, he was to grate on Bonaparte's nerves, a situation later aggravated by his seduction of Josephine. Marat's and Napoleon's relationship would be tenuous thereafter, in part because of the former's marriage to Napoleon's sister Caroline in 1800. There remained a few more officers with whom Bonaparte would soon be coming into contact who would also be rewarded with a marshal's baton. Captain, Captain Jean-Baptiste Bessiers, the son of a barber, was born in Prysac in the Lot in 1768. Like Marat, he attended the College St. Michael of Cahors, where he did well in preparation for the School of Medicine at Mont Montpellier. But when he was only 19, his father's bankruptcy forced him to withdraw from his studies to take up the less inspiring trade of barber-surgeon. Soon, when he was elected second-in-command of a small local National Guard, where he was close friend with, of Marat, he became yet another individual saved by the Revolution, whose blessings he fully supported. 
Joining the army of the Western Pir Pyrenees as a private, he was later elected an officer when he first met General Guerrero, who in turn brought him along to Nice for the expedition into Italy. Jean Lens quickly became a favorite of Napoleon. Born, born in Lecture in 1769, the son of a peasant who had neither the money nor the interest to educate the boy, he did not seem to have a promising future. Fortunately, one of his brothers, a priest, taught him to read, write, and add and subtract, so that unlike Aguero and Messina in their youth, he at least was literate, if at the most elementary level. He was apprenticed early, like many working class boys of his generation, as a dyer, work he found so humiliating that he privately pressed on with his studies. Like most of Bonaparte's future generals, the young, handsome lands, before his numerous battle wounds disfigured him, too was saved from an anonymous, humdrum existence by the fruits of revolution. He joined the Revolution Army only to return to civilian life, working in a cloth shop until 1792. Then, at the age of 23, he was elected second lieutenant in a volunteer battalion fighting with the Army of the Western Pyrenees, rising to the rank of Major by the spring of 1796, although still personally unknown to his new Commander-in-Chief at Nice. Thanks for watching guys, episode 5 is next. Have a great day, Ragnarok out.